really, you all are so kind to us, and we know that Amen. we know that we are here to do our jobs, what the Lord has, has, has commissioned us to do. Amen. But we do thank you for when you take time out to just recognize us. We are grateful. We are grateful for that. So thank you so much for your love and your care, amen, and your blessing. We thank you. In Jesus' name, may God continue to bless you all. Mightily. Amen. Amen. All right, so the only announcement that I have right now, uh, well, two. Women, we are together this coming Saturday, which will be the first Saturday of the month, the 5th of February at 11, amen? Yes. All right, amen. We are here, the 11th. What I am asking of you ladies who will be joining us this, uh, on the 11th is that you think about, pray about, ask the Lord to put on your heart something that he has blessed you with, that has been a blessing to you in your life, that you are now willing to pass on to someone else, to bless them. And when you do that, It'll be your time to give the testimony of that thing that you're giving away as to how it blessed you. Amen? So it is not something that you're going to go out and buy. It is something that belongs to you. Something that you've held, you've held dear. Something that has blessed you. Amen? And now we're going to go and bless someone else with it. Amen? Amen. All right. That's our charge for whomever is going to be with us on uh, next Saturday. Amen? Again, don't spend any money. Amen? It has to come from here and in your own possession. That's right. Amen. Right. amen. All right. Amen. Now, there was another announcement. Did you have an announcement? I saw, I saw the brother. There's any fans of, like, any fans of the last four teams in here? Chargers. I mean, Niners. Niners. Bengals. I'm talking about men. Oh. All right. <laughs> I'm talking about men. <laughs> Niners, Bengals, Rams, our, our Chiefs. Any fans of those four teams? Okay, good. So we can get back there and talk mess to each other about all of our teams that didn't make it and eat the fellowship, right? So uh, we're going to put it on the, on the projector on the big screen back there. And ladies, if you have a man at home and he has the one to watch the game with, tell him to come on and watch with us. And we'll make sure that he's fed well and he gets a good time and it's a safe environment. And we'll send him home right after the game. We promise you that, all right? We'll be Listen, this is our um, anniversary, and I wanted to share something with you all um, concerning uh, this 18-year journey, we we weren't engaged long. Right, right. We met, we kind of clicked, and I think I think we were married within six months, five five or six months. Yeah, it was it was real, it was a real quick engagement, and um, and in that in that time, we just hit we got hit with trial after trial, storm after storm. Um, parents, Lord called our parents home, called our grandparents home. Um, cancer hit our home and a whole bunch of other things. For whatever reason, God saw fit to call us to play in a church in those are high school right. uh -huh. in the middle of all that stuff. And we thought, we thought that he was crazy. And we said, no, God can't be crazy, so we must be crazy. And so we planted the church, and you all have, have literally watched the second half of this marriage kind of come together. Right, right. Uh, because you all were here at the infancy stages. Some of you were here at year one and year two. We were still trying to figure this thing out and get this stuff together and, and figure out how to be. Because there's no book to teach you how to pastor. Right. There's no right. book to teach you how to be a first lady, a, a loving pastor, a pastor's wife. There's no book for that. There's no book to teach you how to raise children besides the one that I wrote. I can't find any other books that teaches you how to navigate through these kinds of waters. So we have to learn by mistake and trial and error and things of that nature. I say all that to say um, to my wife, thank you. Because this has not been easy on her. She's had to share, um, she's had to share, she's had to yeah. share. Man. And not once that she complained about me having to leave the house. Right. Right. And I think a lot of us don't understand uh -huh. what a typical week or month looks like, but um, we're here on Sunday, you see us here on Sunday. But not, a, not many people see the nights that I have to leave the house because somebody's child is dying in the hospital or somebody's child is locked up, incarcerated, or somebody is dealing with law enforcement. Uh, people don't see the times when we have to leave the house to deal with X, Y, Z, and A, B, 17 years, 18, 19 years, going from, from the front to the back, all right? We have, a, we have a ministry full of godly couples that can help you navigate through the struggles of marriage, because marriage is not easy, all right? So please, if that's you, even on Facebook Live, if that's you, don't struggle by yourself. Don't struggle in silence. 
Call the church. If you need help from a couple, God need help from a couple. Mm. We got you. All right, we got you. Amen. Right. Last but not least, yeah, yeah. 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 last but not least, the Canellas had an anniversary yesterday. Yeah. 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 Thirty-nine years, and she hasn't put them out yet. She still, she still loves them. She, if you notice, she, she had eye surgery, so she's not wearing her glasses. Now she can see without her glasses. And I texted Deacon Bobby and said, now she can see how beautiful you are now, finally, right? But 39 years, and, and, and I just, we honor them just like we honor the teachers. Two, two couples that come together, married for decades, and still serving the Lord together. That's a beautiful thing. So God bless you. Praise God for you. John Tinker is our speaker for the hour. Elder yeah. Tinker is, Elder Tinker is a, oh yeah, I'm sorry, let's get the children out of here. She put up there like, he gonna scare them, no, I swear, let's let the children go. She's like, don't bring them away, get the kids out first. <laughs> Elder Tinker, Elder Tinker is a student of the word. He offers a, a unique perspective to whatever he, uh, whatever he studies and he presents. And on today, it's our honor to have him with us Amen. to break the bread of life with us on today. So Amen. would you all say a prayer for Elder Tinker as he comes in his own way. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And good morning. That was a nice reception. I was thinking, uh, Pastor, when you were talking about the ladies thing, bring something to give away. Uh, my wife, uh, you ain't giving me away. Some, some of you don't even take this. It's not happening. But it's good to be before you this morning. Uh, I consider it an honor and a privilege. Uh, and uh, thank God I'm here under much different circumstances than I was the last time I was there before you. You see, today I was actually scheduled to be here. The last time I was up here, the Friday before, uh, Bishop got pneumonia and went to the hospital. Saturday morning, they told him, you ain't getting out till Wednesday. And then I got a call. Hey, you're up, I need you. And uh, that was fine, uh, I'm ready. I'm always ready. Um, but what he probably didn't realize is, uh, Elder Sandy and I had a conversation that Friday afternoon, and she said, you know, you might want to think about getting something ready. And I said, I'm already writing it. And I stayed up Friday night, and I wrote my sermon outline, so we were good. Amen. Let's, uh, let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day, and I ask that you bless these words I'm about to present, and I ask that you cause us to bless somebody's heart, God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to follow along, I'll be in Philippians 3, 13 and 14, for my opening scripture. I hardly ever do an opening scripture, but I thought I would do it today. Amen. And it says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. And so let me back up. Apostle Paul had have been talking to the Philippians about how to live a good, full Christian life. Right. Right. And uh, just as he said that, he said, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of him. He, he doesn't, he's not there, but he knows where he's going. And then he says, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind. Right. Let me say that again, forgetting what is behind, and we're gonna come back to that in just a minute. And straight towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Jesus Christ. Three weeks ago on this platform, uh, Minister Tim was here and he preached a great message. If you didn't see it, uh, it's on the Facebook page. I had a suggestion you go have a look at it because it was amazing. Uh, and he talked to us uh, from Hebrews, well, from a bunch of places, but Hebrews 12, uh, where uh, Paul again writes, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. 
And <clears throat> when I left church that day, I was kind of fired up. And uh, I mean, normally I get home from church and I put my guitar down, my wife changes her clothes, and we go out to lunch. But on this day, I sat down at the computer and I said, you know, I know Apostle Paul talked about the Christian life as a race quite a bit, and I think I've seen it before, and I started looking it up, and I was surprised at how many different references in the Bible equate our life to a race. Uh, and King David wrote about it a couple times, Isaiah, Jeremiah, James, there's a bunch of others. Uh, but I, I find when God repeats himself, which I think he does for me because I have this big fat head, uh, when he repeats himself, it's probably important. And so, if I had to give a title to this message this morning, it would be Keeping Your Eye on the Prize. All right. Keeping Keep your eye on the prize. Oh, that's right. uh, some of you know I played in a Christian rock band in the 80s. Uh, some of you don't. Some of you probably don't care. And that's okay, too. <laughs> but uh, we made records and toured the country. It was yeah, and they actually were records. Um, and our, our great guitar player, Steve Olson, who is watching from Alaska, shout out Alaska. Steve Olson wrote a song called Eye on the Prize. And it was easily our best song and got the most airplay and uh, one that the fans loved the most. And to this day, 35, 37 years later, uh, when people talk to me about that old band, that song always comes up. And the message of that song has resonated with me ever since. Keep my eye on the prize. Uh, and the lyrics, he says, uh, it's the 15th round and my back is against the wall. I've been beat and battered, torn and tattered like an old pair of shoes. I wish I could quit, but I know this is it. There's just too much to lose. Keeping my eye on the prize. Won't give it up and won't be denied. Today we're going to talk about keeping your eye on the prize. Life in the 21st century is filled with things that cause us to take our eyes off the things of God. Distractions. So I started looking at this race thing. And I did some, uh, you know, I did some uh, looking at myself, a little retrospect, because it seems like a lot of people quit the race or take a break from the race, uh, living the Christian life. And so I thought, I've done that. What caused me to do that? What are the stumbling blocks? And how can we try to stay in the race? And so uh, today I want to talk about, uh, I'll say four points, uh, and see if we uh, help you uh, to stay better connected in the race. So the first question I want to ask is who has your ear? Who are you listening to? Are you watching Fox News and CNN 24-7, getting all whipped up into a frenzy? Is that where your time is? Uh, because, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the news, there's not, but how much time are you investing in it? And what is it doing to you? And is it keeping you from the things of God? Uh, I used to be a sports addict. And, uh, oh, I had great noble reasons that my company advertised on Sports Talk Radio. So I had to listen. I mean, are we getting our money's worth? Uh, but I took it to an extreme because I, as soon as I woke up in the morning, it was sports. And I even listened to it when I was taking my shower, and then I'd get in the car and listen to it, and then I'd listen to it at work. And then I'd come home and I'd watch all the games, and that's all I talked about 24-7 was sports. That's the only thing that came out of my mouth was sports. I even talked to my wife about it, and she didn't care. No, she, I thank God uh, she loves me because she didn't tell me to shut up. Or, you know, she, she just smiled and nodded. Amen. <laughs> but uh, during that time, uh, I was also out of the race. 
I quit church four years. I was in a church for 25 years. Through a series of events, I ended up having to leave. And the day I got home from church, I threw my guitar in the closet, didn't touch it for 25 years, didn't step inside, I mean, didn't touch it for four years, didn't step into church for four years. Uh, and then the one day, uh, God said, you need to start serving. And I told my wife, I said, I, I gotta start serving again, I gotta make some changes. And I woke up one morning, sat down with my coffee and went to put on sports talk, and I said, no, I'm not gonna do it. And I gave it up cold turkey, and I just, walk away. And now I try to fill myself more with the things of God. And then somewhere around that time, I'm not sure if it was a little before or a little after, uh, I ended up uh, visiting this church. I wasn't really looking for a church, but I had met a bishop on Facebook. We were Facebook friends, whatever that is. <laughs> but he invited me, and I thought, well, I gotta go. Uh, to one service and I got home and I told my wife I said I found me a church and I've been here ever since I can't get rid of you so who has your ears Galatians 5 7 and 8 why not two Galatians 5 why not two one there's only one Galatians no Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. That's all right. Sorry. <laughs> Paul says, you were running a good race. Who right. cut in on you to keep yeah. you from obeying the truth? Right. That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. Right. Uh, the King James Bible says, who hindered you? Mm -hmm. And I know you used the scripture a couple of weeks ago, Bishop, but I, it certainly fits in. And the Greek word for that is anakonto. So, which means be back, or check, or bewitch. So Paul was saying, dang man, you guys were doing so good. Who beat you back? Who bewitched you? Who has your ear? That's the question. Who has your ear? And it'll come from you uh, from every direction. I have a client, good client, spends a lot of money with us. The guy's been married and divorced three times. Uh, recently, I split up with his new fiance. I was at a business meeting with him a couple weeks ago. Uh, he wants to get some more work done. Okay. And we were done. And then uh, out of the blue, well, this dude decides he wants to give me some marital advice. I didn't ask for it. I didn't want it. I don't need it. But he's going full tilt, giving me his best marital advice. Now, he doesn't really know anything about my personal life, whether or not I'm even married. We've never talked about it. But here he is giving me this advice, and I'm like telling myself, dear God, please don't let this stick, because it wasn't very good advice. Please don't let this stick in my head. I don't want this rattling around in my head. I don't need it. Uh, well, it was cordial and polite, and I left. Uh, but why would me, why would I need advice from him on marriage? I've been married 45 and a half years. I must have done something right. right. Or, or maybe she did. Probably. <laughs> so who's got you here? Uh, you got to be careful what you let in. Yes, that's right. Secondly, what are you thinking about? You know, our minds have a tendency to wander to some pretty dark places. Or, or at least mine occasionally. Uh, right. uh, and when I was a, a little kid, uh, I used to worry about stuff for no reason. Mm. And my mom used to call me a worry part. <laughs> I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> but she would always say, stop worrying. Uh, and, and I'm way better now because I really try to focus more on reliance on God and not worry. But we worry or Sometimes anxiety creeps in, or fear, or guilt. What are you thinking about? Got to watch your mind. Whenever this happens to me, whenever my mind starts to go to someplace dark, and I need to check myself, 
I have one word that I say to myself. I have a lot of words, little key words. That when something comes up and I need to get myself back on track, I use it. And this key word is whosoever, whosoever. Whenever I'm getting out of control, I say whosoever or whatsoever. But, so we'll look at Philippians 4 eight. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. That's not uh, guilt, that's not fear, that's not anxiety, that's none of those things fit into that category. And so when you find yourself wandering down that path, tell yourself whatsoever. And this is going to lead me directly into my third point, because if you're there and you're really wandering down that road, uh, how's your prayer life? How is your prayer life? Prayer is your foundation of everything that we do. Um, there's, there's no way around it. It's, it's what we need to do. Uh, and if you look in the Bible, it's really easy to find a gazillion scriptures that tell us we're supposed to pray. Right. Even how we're supposed to pray and why. But it's one of those things that we often overlook. The word says you have not because you ask not. You didn't ask God for it, so that's why you don't have it. Uh, I drive a lot for work, uh, going to see clients or job sites or vendors or wherever. And when I'm in my car, I don't listen to the radio. Uh, I rarely listen to music unless the, the band's trying to learn a song that's particularly difficult. I'll listen to that. But that's my time that I dedicate to God. Uh, I'm either praying or meditating or thinking about the things of God. Uh, and I find that it helps me. And even I get distracted. Um, it happens, so you're going to get distracted. Uh, I was telling my wife about this probably a week and a half ago. I'm, I'm driving along and I'm having a great conversation uh, with God. And all of a sudden, I'm like, who? Lamborghini. That's a pretty car. Why is he going so slow? Come on, drop that car. Wonder how much you paid for it. I wonder what he does for a living. Why don't he get, why don't he get his woman with him? And, and then my mind went somewhere else, somewhere else, somewhere else. And it's 15 minutes later, and I'm like, dude, I just hung up on God. <laughs> I was talking to God, and I just kicked the <laughs> door. So I'm, I'm back. I'm like, okay, God, I'm sorry, I'm back. So prayer, and, and be careful what you pray for. Pray for God for things. Okay? You, I, you're not going to hear me say, dear God, please get that pretty Lamborghini. I'm not going to pray for your library. Uh, first of all, uh, I don't think I can afford the insurance. <laughs> Let alone, uh, better not break down. I think I'll be sitting in the driveway. So, I believe God wants us to develop a habit of prayer. It really does. Um, but, Oftentimes, we have an all or nothing mentality. We'll go to church and we'll hear a preacher preaching about we need to have a better prayer life, much like I'm talking about this morning. And then we leave and we say, yes, God, I want to have a better prayer life. And I talk to people about prayer all the time. And so if that's you, when you leave today and say, God, I need to have a better prayer life, let me help you out. Mm. For some reason, it seems universal that people get convicted and say, i got to have a better prayer life. Mm. They say, God, I'm going to give you an hour a day. Mm. Oh. Oh. I don't know why they pick an hour. But the first day, they pray for 20 minutes. 
to me, you got nothing else to pray about. The next day, uh, 10 or 12 minutes, the next day they, they can't pray at all because something came up. And the day after that, they say, I ain't doing this no more. There's no way I can pray for an hour a day. And we have an all or nothing mentality, unfortunately. And so they just quit praying. And that's not going to develop the habit of prayer. So uh, do yourself a favor if you leave here today and say, yes, I need to have a better prayer life. How about commit to five minutes? You can certainly pray for five minutes. Anybody can. But pick a time every day when you can pray for five minutes. Even if you only want to do it Monday through Friday. But do it. And what you'll notice is that in about six weeks, you will have developed a habit. It'll be a habit. It'll be second nature. You won't even think about it. I pray, we pray, the elders of this church every morning, 8 o'clock, that's the time we can all get together. And we've been doing it for years. Um, I remember about six or seven weeks after we started, I was here at church that Sunday having a conversation with Elder Barbara. And she said, you know, yesterday, Saturday, we only pray Monday through Friday. She said, yesterday I got up and it was eight. And I had my phone in my hand and I was staring at it. And I'm like, why didn't he come? He's going to call. He always calls. And she said, then I realized this Saturday he didn't call. That's a habit of prayer. Elder Barbara has a habit of prayer. And uh, we have almost perfect attendance every day. Now, occasionally somebody can join us. Uh, and we understand that. So no big deal. James 5, 13. Is the scripture I chose. I could have chose any one of them, but I like this one because I think it's a reversible scripture. Um, and it says, Is any among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is any happy? Let them sing songs of praise. I think you could reverse that and say, Is any among you in trouble? Let them sing songs of praise. Uh, is any happy? Let them pray. You have to develop a prayer life, people. That is paramount, and it has to be a habit. And then the other thing that trips us up is we just can't seem to let go of the past. We, we, we carry it with us, and we shouldn't. In my opening uh, scripture, Paul wrote, these things I do, forgetting what is behind. Now Paul, as Minister Tim talked about a few weeks ago, he was a bad dude. Um, he, by his own admission, the chief sinner. That's what he called himself. We don't know if he actually killed people. Um, but we do know that he was present when people were killed. Um, we know that he ripped people out of their homes, men and women, and had them thrown in jail. And we also know that he was an aristocrat, so, uh, you know, I don't know that he actually killed anybody, but he may have had people for that, because that's what aristocrats, you know, I mean, look, if you're a mafia boss, you don't kill anybody. But that's not scripture. Uh, that's just what rattles around my own. I think he did it. I could be wrong. But it doesn't matter. Uh, right. Paul met Jesus on the Damascus Road and he got converted. And he said, forget it, what is behind. That's in scripture. That is scripture. And that's what God wants us to do. Yeah. And in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But we don't want to let old things pass away. Some of us have done some pretty bad stuff, including myself, before I got saved. And sometimes we drag that along with us. 
I remember I said our Christian life is like running a race. Uh, but when you drag your past along, it's like having a boulder tied around your waist. You're not running a race, you're walking a race, and you're walking slow. You ain't never going to finish the race that way. So we have to learn to forgive ourselves and let those things go. Amen. Amen. The other side of the coin, when we do get saved, old things are passed away. And we say, well, but uh, I'm just going to pick up this one thing and bring it with me because it's not that bad and it's kind of fun. You know, I should be able to go to the club every so often if I want to. Wait a minute. Well, I'll pick this up and bring it with me too. It's not that bad. I should be able to go out and have drinks with the fellows a couple of times a month. Nothing wrong with that. And so on and so on and so on. Pretty soon we have a whole bag full of these things that we're carrying around with us. And that's not how God wants us to live. So you got to let go of your past in every sense of the word. This is another scripture that Bishop brought, brought up a while back, but uh, I, I want to bring it up again, and the truth, I already had it written in my outline when you brought it up a couple of weeks ago. I was on pins and needles, and when you brought it up, I'm like, don't you steal my sermon. <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 1, verse 1 and 2. It says, blessed, meaning fortunate, prosperous, favored by God. That's what I want to be. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Meaning, following their advice and their example. Are you getting good godly advice? Nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But he delights in the law of the Lord. And on his law, his precepts, his teachings, his word, he meditates day and night. That means habitually, day and night. So let, let me wrap it up by saying this. Don't let anybody steer you off course. Guard your thoughts, pray, and let the past go. Keep your eye on the prize. Amen. And that's all I got. Yeah, Thank amen. you.
much. Yeah. And he thanked me, but you all should really thank him. Amen? Because his phone rings more than mine. My, my rings, and I go and I call and I do, but he never stops going. He's like a little energizer bunny, amen? So if you call more than likely, he will come. If he's not able, he will send someone, amen? But he's always thinking about us, amen? He's always thinking about his family, and he's always thinking about his church family as well. So you all always know that you are well prayed for, you are well thought of, amen, through your bishop. Amen. So I love you on today. 18 years is like, like two, actually. It's like two. It doesn't seem like it's been 18 years, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful to God for this man who loves me woo, beyond. Amen. He loves me beyond. And I thank him for all the ways. I told him on Facebook. I thank him for all the ways that you love me. Amen. He's not easy to deal with, right? But I'm not easy to deal with either. Not all the time. You all, you all, you all see me, and I am who I am here. I'm, I'm that way at home. But he gets more. He gets more. So thank you for putting up with me, amen, for 18 years. So you all, we're grateful to you all today. Thank you again for the blessings that that you bestowed upon us today. Monetary gifts are always a blessing. Always a blessing. Any gift is a blessing. But monetary gifts. You all know how we feel about money, right? Sometimes we like to hold it real close. Yeah, so right. when you all release your hand right. to us, right. understand that we are truly grateful. Yeah. We are truly grateful. So thank you so much. Now, with that being said, we, our children are going to be coming in. They are lining up. They look excited. They have papers in their hand. Amen. Amen. You don't know oh, yeah. As the children come, let me, let me, let me Converse with Bishop for a second. What's going on? Amen. All right, babies. So before we dismiss. We are going to pray for the distracted in the house. That was his request. Amen. That that we pray for the distracted in the house. There, <laughs> that can be everyone. That can be everyone at different times. Amen. But sometimes, even in the house, we're distracted. When we're in this place, in this building, where we allow ourselves to get distracted, and we cannot do that. We cannot do that. We cannot take our eyes off the prize. We cannot take our eyes off of God. So when you commit to being in communion with God in whatever way that it is, that's your commitment to him. Let's not break it. Let's do our best. Amen? So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again on this morning, Lord. We thank you for this day, Father God, that you have given us, God. Lord, it wasn't promised to us, but yet here we are. So now, God, we heard the message that went forth today, God, to keep our eyes on the prize. Lord, we just ask your Holy Spirit to just empower us to do just that, God. Lord, when we commit time to you, God, when we commit our thoughts, Father God, to you, help us, Lord, in the distractions, Father God. Let us not look to the left or the right, Father. Let us not keep our ears open to anything but your voice, God. Lord, we need you every hour of every day, God. We need you. And if we need you, Lord, we need to make sure, Father God, that we keep our eyes on you, Father God, our ears attentive to your word, Father, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, those who are distracted outside the house, God, those that are distracted inside the house, God, we pray a special prayer, God, for those easily distracted, Lord. And for some of us, God, who just sometimes, you know, we let ourselves go there. Help us, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We know that we need to be close with you. So we're praying, Lord, that when we leave this place today, Father, we'll be better. We'll be better with less distractions, Father God. And, and as the days and the weeks and the months and the years go by, Father God, that we'll have less and less and less distractions and worries, God, and fear, Father God, that we can just hone in on you. So we thank you, God, for all that you're going to do for us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
We thank you, we praise you, and we give you glory. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, you all, if you're in the house and you notice a distracted person in the house, just tap them on the shoulder and say, we got to keep our eye on the prize. Yeah. Amen? Just, just tell them we need to keep our eye on the prize. Because that's why we're here, amen? To get what God has for us and also to give him what we have for him. So we thank God for you all. We're going to be watchers one for another. Amen? Amen. All right. We're standing. Our offering baskets are in the back. You have your tithe and offering. Go ahead and, and give that to Deacon Bobby. And that's that round basket that's in the back. Amen? If you want to bless Bishop and the family, there's a little rectangular basket back there. Amen. We thank you all for, for all you do. We thank you for coming here and communing with us, with the Lord. You can be anywhere, but here you are. So God bless you. All right, so we're going to be dismissed row by row, and I'm just going to pray a prayer of benediction. Amen? All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We give you all the glory, Father. Lord, we had a wonderful message on today, Father. We just ask that you help us to hide that message in our heart, Father God. So that we can run it out, Lord. Not even walk it out. Run it out, Father God. For you. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we leave this place, whenever your presence, God, we ask that you watch over us. And that you keep us, Father God, in the hollow of your hand, Lord. Lord, help us with our distractions, Father. Keep us, Father God, focused on you. And Lord, a special prayer, Lord, to all who just saw fit, Father God, to just bless us today. Lord, they didn't have to do it, Father God. Bless them, Lord, in a mighty way. We thank you, Lord, for this 18 years that we're together, Father God. We thank you for the time that we spent during those 18 years, Lord, here serving your people, God, in your community. We just ask, Lord, that you keep us going, Father God, in the right direction. We thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.